welcome to the GMI Hub Online. We're having a great evening. So glad you're here. My name is Dale Borland. And I'm Cheryl Duick, and I'm so excited that you're here to be with us. We are going to be talking about mentorship, and we have mm. two great panelists that are with us. We have Candice. Uh, Candice Safri, who is a worship director, a minister, a music educator, and she's the founder of Nova Music School and One Body, which is an app company. Is that right, Candice? That's right. That's right. right. So welcome, Candice. Thank you for being with us. We also have Stephen H. Lewis. Some of you may know him, the former music director for Juno Award winning groups Sharon Riley and the Faith Chorale. He is currently the Dean of Music for Canada Christian College, and he is the founder, along with his wife, with Legacy Music House, which is aimed at mentoring and helping churches with their worship teams. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it's you great to me. have you both with us. Fabulous. We are so, so happy to have you. As today, we are going to be speaking on the topic of mentorship. And it's something to, to think about uh, what a mentor is. I mean, uh, we, we as, as, as Christian believers can think of the, the, uh, the ultimate uh, mentor as Christ Jesus. And uh, he, he, he did it through servant leadership. And he, he was able to instruct and lead and guide and give that and then he was able to be a servant at the same time as a leader which is expressed in john 13 as he talked about the washing of the disciples feet he knew how to take it to the next level and so we're going to talk a little bit about mentorship today and we hope that you enjoy as we unpack it so maybe the first question should be why why should we do mentorship in the first place what's the purpose of it it's discipleship um but um and i'm I'm just gonna go on the music side of it um there needs to be a marrying of the spiritual side which is what you're going to get through discipleship in church but then the skilled side as well and so i think mentorship when it comes to music ministry is like it's double the work almost if you're actually gonna have a music mentor because there's that skill component as well, which makes it really unique. And I think that it's necessary because a lot of times, especially in churches, you have someone who has a really great heart for worship and might lack the skill, or you might have someone who's really skilled at music and they don't understand that heart for music or for worship yet. And so I think mentorship is so necessary because you have to constantly marry the two. Otherwise pride can get in if you're that skilled musician, or I mean, we're not really operating in excellence at this, the skill isn't there, you know, so I, I believe it's very necessary. What about you, Stephen? Mentorship for me means growth. It means that you're going somewhere. It means that you're, you're, you, you've decided as an individual to take what's inside you to the next level. You know you can't do it, so you find someone who can. Um, and I think that... Um, that's what the main the main goal is. Just like Candice said, you have to you have to merge the two. Skillful musicians, but they're not ready to lead. They're not even ready to. Um, some some of them are not even ready to be. For me, are not even ready to be on stage because mm-hmm. the other aspect of of who you are is not there yet. Yeah. Right. Um, great musician, bad character. Yeah. Great musician. Uh, terrible ego, yeah. right? And for me, when it when it comes to um, when it comes to merging the two, it has there has to be a balance. I have to see more integrity in you before I see the talent. The talent the the talent stuff can can easily be trained and whatnot. But if you don't have the character that's needed for you to grow. That, that's going to be an issue, and it's going to be an issue within the team. You, you could be the weakest link, link, even if you're the strongest player mm-hmm. or singer. That's, that's, that's a good word there. And I th- we touched on this in several conversations in our past interviews. Uh, it seems that character above credentials, uh, not that credentials aren't important. It's just that there's so much more to the, the puzzle than having just this element of talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And I mean, mm-hmm. you jumped, I think you jumped it to say like, they're not ready to lead. And like, mm-hmm. that's huge because anyone who steps on that platform in the eyes of any visitor that's coming into a service in the eyes of anybody who's there, when you stand on that stage, you're a leader right. and you have to understand that it's worship. And a lot of times if you're very, like I've seen those with very skilled musicians, um, you can play but I mean, if your heart isn't ready to worship or to surrender or to, you know, there needs to be um, the lifestyle that backs it up. Otherwise, it's really meaningless. Like, what are you offering to God? What is it? Is it, it doesn't mean anything. I always tell my, um, my team, you're not doing God a favor by being here. If you think that you're doing God a favor because you decided to show up and you decided, no, no, he doesn't, like, it's meaningless. So Right. Yeah. So, right. so how do we, how do we build, uh, how do we mentor that? Like, how do we, I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing there's a need for mentorship for character building. There's also a possible need for mentorship in terms of the actual talent. So I can kind of, kind of picture what the talent mentorship would look like. It'd be almost like Candace, how you would teach someone to play piano. For example, you sit there and you kind of help them through the keys or helping them with any other instrument. But how do you help mentor the character? How, how does, what does that look like? Look like for our teams. Um, and uh, I usually start really young with when we start training in musicians to bring them in. Um, what we're trying to work towards when it comes to discipleship across the board in our ministries is the one-on-one aspect of it. Because there's a lot of group things. You can go to a conference, you can go to an event, but that's not mentorship. Mentorship is not a group event. Mentorship is very, or discipleship is a one-on-one or maybe small group thing. And so it's looked like a lot of, you know, maybe one-on-one devos and really just getting into the word together. Um, I've had one one young lady I was uh, working with to become a worship leader. And so we would do nightly devotions or um, it would be, um, you know, how do we, Um, understand the atmosphere when you're on stage and and just back and forth with some questions about like, you know, how can I intentionally and and very authentically welcome in the Holy Spirit when I'm leading? Like, what do I say? Do I prepare what I say? Do I prepare my hallelujah? You know what I mean? Like very like just, you know, these are questions that they have as they're coming up Um, and having, but the thing is, is, and I think this is where we're going to get to is the hard part with mentorship is that it's a real investment. Like, you have to invest some time and it's it's not like because mentorship is a one-on-one thing you can't batch it you can't just say okay we're going to do everything at once and so you can have those one-off events but when you're really mentoring someone it's it's really small scale yeah right 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 that that that's that's good that's good um hey go to mcdonald's Mm -hmm. go to tim's take take them out first of all i want to know who you are yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I want to know who you are, where you come from, you know, what's your family like, what's your background, you know, I need to know all of that so that you can see that I, I'm, I am investing in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about relationship, right? Yeah. It's build a relationship because that's the only way that we're really going to see who you are unless, until you're comfortable with me. As a leader, I have to make sure that, that you're comfortable with me and that you can trust me, mm-hmm. you know. No matter what, if there's any issues, you you have you have my number. Give me a call. Let's 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 work it out that way. And then once I get that trust factor, then we can start working about working into now mentoring you and seeing exactly. I need to know what's inside you, because most of the times, and I, I'm sure Candace can see, you know, when you when you first talk individually talk to somebody who you, who who needs mentoring. You already see you already see what's inside them before they see it. It's yeah. like a, as you discern. Mm-hmm. We just we just have a, a discerning spirit to see. There's you don't see it, sure. but I I see it. I see it before you see it. So now I got to pull that out, and I have to find a way to pull who you really are out, and mm-hmm. find a way that now you can actually walk into what you're, what God is telling you to do, your destiny. Stephen, you, um, in your business with Legacy, you have mm-hmm. the opportunity to visit a lot of different churches. Do you find that a lot of churches are practicing mentorship? No. You don't no, find a lot that? Of, I don't, I, I don't see it. In all the churches that I, that I kind of been in, 
and sorry to say, people are more interest in, interested in making sure the flow of the service is smooth and, and goes well. You know, um, you, have, you have an opening song. Opening song goes into a praise song. Praise song goes into a worship song. A worship song then, then after the worship song, end of worship announcement. Um, and the team, the team normally is just used to that routine that they, the, the team more is more stagnant than anything else. So mentoring them is getting to the, getting to find out who the lead, who the lead is talking to the past. When, 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 when I get called in, I, ha I have to have a relationship with the pastor. If I don't have a, rela a relationship with the pastor, me, me, and, me and the pastor are not, you know, talking or WhatsApping and, and, and we're, we're on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's just not going to work. It's just be because I need to have that overall authority to, in order to, to change things. And he has to, he or she has to see that. The pastor has to see that, you know what? What's lacking in my worship? What's lacking in my service? You know, that way, if I approach it that way, then I could start targeting the leaders who, who need to change their mindset and work my way down. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's different for a lot, of, a lot of churches. And a lot of churches, it's very hard because it's easy to, to deal with a church that has one service. But if you have a church that has four services, yeah. it's, it's a totally different... Um, it's a totally yeah, different so, gamut. It's a totally absolutely. different gamut. And, and even how they, even how they practice for it, it's more task oriented. Okay. We got, we got it. It's, it's, it's service number two. These are the songs that those are the songs, you know, and it's just like, I don't want to, uh, it's hard for, uh, it's hard for me to, it's almost like um, you're punching in, yeah. You sing, you punch yeah. out. And and it's just that that rotation. But there's there's no there's actually no time for mentorship because of the way the locomotive is running. It's fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So you the, the team could barely keep up, the band could barely keep up. So you're just going with the motion of the flow of the church and it's fast, fast pace. So mm -hmm. hey. You okay, hit the well, nail on the head. Uh, huh? You hit the nail on the head because the thing is mentorship is a long-term yes. strategy. You know, it's yes. not, we just need to, like, there's um, the urgent and there's the important. And a lot right. of times we'll rush to meet the urgent rather than right. the important. That's and so there's no long-term vision to say, we envision a worship team that does this, and here's how we backtrack to pick the Right. Step. It's what do we need to do for this Sunday? What do we need to do for that right. Sunday? Right. And so absolutely. Right. Right. And that's the mentality of the leaders. It's like, mm -hmm. pastor gave us this agenda and we have to, as long as we do it, and, and, and it doesn't have to be in excellence. It's just, they just have to get it done. Mm -hmm. They feel like just getting it done is good. Mm -hmm. But it's, and that's it's not, the mentality of the members too. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's no real excellence. There's no real, you know, precise execution to what you're doing. No. You're just going to sing the song from beginning to end. Whatever, whatever you decide to do, that's what it is. And you just continue that cycle over and over and over again. Nobody's getting mentored. Nobody's growing. Mm -hmm. But you feel that it's grown because you have, you have, four, you have four, four services. You know, the, ch the church is going. The word is good. Everything. Sure, you got everything, the recipe, right? Growing. You got the recipe and you're following the instructions. Everything right. Seems to it's, but, it's a good recipe. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a decent recipe that seems to work. Yeah. But when you talk to the members, they are burnt out. They are totally, they, they're totally burnt out. They just, they just come in, they work. It's, it's almost like a job. Mm -hmm. And there's no real relationship between the singers because all they're doing at times, because the team is so big, you're not necessarily going to be singing with the same person every Sunday. You'll sing with somebody different that maybe some that you, you probably don't really know. 
mm-hmm. right? So it's 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 a big it's a big issue that's not being resolved or not that's not being um, tackled with. So that's that's an interesting comment. I, I was just getting a, a a question. I think you've already answered it, which is which is more important, the mentorship of the team or the service Sunday morning? And I think you both kind of tapped into that. It's there's the urgent and the important, and the important yeah. sounds like it's the mentorship that should be happening. And am I correct in assuming this? You can actually tell when a when a team is has been mentored versus a team that has not. Am I correct in assuming that? Yes. You can actually see it? Yeah. Yes, you can actually see it. You you, you basically see the, the overall maturity of people, just the, their demeanor, their character when they come into I all I, I'm a very, very observant person. When I come when when pastors or ministries call me in to um, work with their praise team or work with their music team, the first thing that I do is I wanna know, okay, when's when's the rehearsal? And when is the next time they're going to be ministering? So if it's Sunday, okay, I'm going to come in on Sunday. Don't let them know that I'm coming. I'm going to come to rehearse the rehearsal. Don't let them know that I'm coming. And I just come in and I observe. Just observe. See how see how effective or not effective the the rehearsal is, or how effective or non effective the the uh, the service is. Um, and and you, I also observe individuals as well to see, okay, this person has the, I can see that there's leadership quality within that person as she was either leading or playing or um, doing something. I can see that. Um, but o- overall, um, it's, it's, it's an observing factor that, that when I come in, I want to see exactly how, how mature they are and how, how much work I need to do in order to get them to, to that next level. Interesting. Candice, you work with a lot of younger people, is that correct? Yeah, I do. How do they perceive being mentored? Are they open to it or uh, is it more the, hey, we know what to do and we're just going to run and do it? Are they just zealots? <laughs> you know? It really depends. Um, it depends. Uh, in our church, we've changed a lot of things over the last few years um, just because... Um, you, like, and I guess most churches have like a youth team and they, they have the other teams and we broke that down because mentorship will happen intergenerationally and a lot of churches um, have started I don't know like I, I, I think there's changing wins with this but um, segmented teams I mean don't really give you like th- within the youth team you have what one one person might be speaking into them whereas on an intergenerational team you can have many people that can be coaching or or even just on the spiritual side you know where they might come in and say well I already know this skillfully and I can do this um, at least they get a chance to um, you know be a part of something bigger so um, I found it really depends on the personality of the young people but um, more often than not, um, if you present the idea of mentorship as um, a partnership, because a lot of times you can have a mentor that wants to mentor someone, but they don't want to be mentored, you're not going to have, it's going to be like you're pulling against the green. You might have a young person who wants to be mentored and they're hungry and they can't connect with someone who wants to pour in. So the moment you kind of say, hey, here's this arrangement, we are willing to mentor you. If you are willing and you're hungry to come, um, this is what this requires. Because a lot of times if the terms and conditions aren't clear, then they have a false idea of what the relationship is. And you have to kind of understand that there's got to be some accountability and mentorship. Like if, if I can't like, you know, call you to say, okay, I need you to step up and do this. And there's no accountability where I'm going to follow up with them or, or, or whatever, then they start to treat it as there's nothing going on. So especially with kids, there needs to be a little bit more of a framework of mentorship. And we run, we run several different mentorship programs where there's more of a structure and there's like a period of time where they're being mentored and they can like come back in and stuff. But that's how we'll kind of do it with the kids. With adults, it's a little bit differently. Their time is a little bit different, but we try to structure as much of that as possible so that there's an understanding. Because if there isn't an understanding, you're going to have a frustrated mentor and you're going to have frustrated young people and it's just not going to match. Absolutely. So um, yeah, that's absolutely. what I found with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Stephen, do you find the same when you, when you go to different churches and there's young people, like a younger team to work with, do you find the same, same thing? 
I do. Um, I kind of, I, in, in a sense, I kind of hope that it's more younger people than it is older people. It's hard to change older people. <laughs> it's so hard. Oh, it, it, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. And because younger people, their mindset is already about learning, you know, they're going to school, they're, you know, they're, 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 it's, it's already there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you pouring a little bit more into something that they're interested in, mm-hmm. it'll be a little bit more easier than an, an older person who has, you know, family way. life, kids, you know, a, a career. Um, and now you're trying to fit in, you know, a part uh, now I'm part of the worship team who, you know, I, I, I sang, I sang 15 years ago, you know, when I was younger and I haven't s- sang since and pastor just called me and said, she, he, he, they want me to be part of the praise team. So here I am. Okay. So it's, it's two different, two different gamuts. And, and it's almost as if, um, well, the, 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 Older folks is more like you're, you're almost trying to pull teeth at times because they have so much on their mind and rehearsal isn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes rehearsal isn't one. You know, you're there at seven, they're looking at their time to see what time they have to leave. And so it's, it's, a very, it's a very interesting dynamic. That's why I have to keep things a little bit more interesting for them um, so that they can at least be engaged. So I, I do a lot of things that will take them out of their comfort zone. You know, okay, you're going to sing a solo. You're going to do this, or you're going to do that. Um, just so that they can stay kind of on their toes to know that, you know what, I can be called at any time. So I better be ready. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Very good. Can I just interject at this time? I want to just to remind those who are just joining on with us now. Uh, this is the, the Hub Online, and we are um, having an incredible conversation about music, mentorship, and ministry. We have Candace Safri and Stephen Lewis, and um, both have a, a vast experience with uh, leadership in, in the music ministry. Awesome. And I also want to encourage you who are watching, go ahead and share this. You know, if you're finding this information very informative and helpful and you think that someone else on your team or in your circle can be benefit from this conversation, come on, like send them the message, let them know that we're on and, and share this experience with them. Now we talked about valued leadership in young people, just, just to recap a little bit. Mm-hmm. and some challenges that may be associated with that. Is there anything, that, that, not to get too far away from it, Candace, is, is there anything that's a challenge when you are younger as a leader? Is there a, a perception uh, per, potentially from those who are uh, needing mentorship? Um, I think with the, especially in today's landscape, um, and, and this works as a positive and a negative. As Stephen said, because of technology, you can be mentored by anyone. That's really good because they're learning from so many places, but then on the offset, they're also learning from so many places. And mm-hmm. as many good influences as there's out there, there are also equally bad influences out there. That's right. There's distractions That's right. and there's different things um, which makes it hard um, sometimes when you're trying to mentor someone and they lose focus or they, you know what I mean? Cause mentorship is a, it's a long, it's a long, pro- not, and it's not like crazy in the sense, but I mean, it's something that you're going to commit to over several months or maybe several years yeah. and you don't always see the fruits right away. And with young yeah. people, they want to see everything right away. And so a lot of times to get them to kind of go the long haul. So there is that character development. So they do understand, like, you know, they might be like, well, I want to be on the stage right now. So let me see if I can pursue this or pursue that. And so I think that is sometimes a little bit of a struggle with younger people, just depending on their own personality and how they've come. Um, but yeah, in today's day and age, it makes it a lot more easy for them to either get distracted or to even time to say that, Hey, do you have the time to commit? Yes, I do. Oh no, I felt, okay, no, I'm on social media. No, I'm on this. And like, um, their commitment sometimes isn't as firm as you'd like it to be Mm -hmm. uh, to that process. So Mm -hmm. I think those are some things that now like this generation is, is facing. Have you ever encountered, um, a situation where there's a team of people they maybe they've been leading 
worship or they've been in leadership positions and from your perspective from the outside looking in you're going wow they they should they 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 could be taken to another level um, in their potential they and and that would work with mentorship but they kind of feel that they've already arrived and if so how did you handle that or did you <laughs> um i would say yes yes i've 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 worked with um a lot of a lot of groups within the city um a lot of soloists as well within the city um so working worth working with groups that have already in a sense established themselves can be an overall challenge it all depends on their perspective on what they want done i can't necessarily say that there's there has been an entire group where they were like okay i i got this i got that i always make sure that when i'm going in to a well established group and whatnot that i always have something that i need to bring to them that they haven't done whether it be vocals whether it be band or anything like that whether it be an arrangement or whether it be something that they never thought of that is something that i'm going to bring to them um and then stretch them in a sense to let them know that, you know what, you're good, but you can be better. Um, sometimes um, it could be overall breathing. It could be your concept of arranging. It could be a, lo a lot of things that, that I could pinpoint uh, to them that they see, oh, well, I, I didn't know that or I didn't see that. I, I, I didn't recognize that. So. Um, as as someone who is, I, I guess, as as someone who is coming in, anybody who's trying to do something like that, always make sure that you have something that you're going to bring that they have not um, encountered yet. Yes, great singers, they they understand uh, three part harmony. That's great. Bring something that they do, they do, they haven't done before. You know, that way um, they're learning. And it's also challenging you as a mentor. You're also being challenged. I love to be challenged. If I'm going in and mentoring people, I still want to be challenged by someone, by, by some things that, that, you know, I may not have, may not, may not have touched on with this group, but th this next group who I believe can do it. I can do that. One of the first records that I did, um, well, I guess one of the first solo records I did, was with a group called Echoes of Praise, and it was a fee. It was um, it was a family group, and they had one very close friend that that made up four four singers. But now you're dealing with family group, and when it comes to family harmony, there's there is no there's there's nothing that could touch family harmony. That that is the tightest part of that is the tightest harmony that you can ever get. Three yeah, siblings. Yeah, of course. They have the same timbers in the family. It's it's everything. They grew right. up yeah. knowing each other. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they know each other inside and out. So so when they sing, it's just just perfect. So I'm coming in, they want me to do their record, um, and they want to do hymns. So I'm like, you guys are like individually. As soloists, they're phenomenal. Coming together, singing, they're absolutely brilliant. So what am I what what am I gonna do to, to make that even better? I gotta show them other things that they don't know. Right? There's certain harmonies that they may not have thought of, but I'm gonna bring that to them. I'm gonna open their ears, their eyes, their their um their imagination, vocal imagination open so that they can see you know what you're good here but you're going to be better once this record is done you're going to learn a lot more stuff in this process so as a leader that's what you have to bring something that they never thought of before so that they can go to the next level that leads into a great 
a great question, which is a little bit simple, but I'm going to ask anyway. What are some other qualities of a great mentor? I think um, a good mentor needs to be available. Um, and I think it's great that you have um, a, a, a business, a ministry that goes around and assists churches with it because a lot of times you don't have those resources in-house. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it, yeah, if you don't have access to it inside, just even knowing that there's someone who's going to come and be available to you. But within, if, even if it's just one-on-one -on -one within a church, finding people who are available because it's busy. Life is busy. And um, sometimes you don't need, um, if it's a spiritual mentorship and not necessarily a skilled mentorship, um, then it, the requirements don't have to be really high. Um, I think of this just in terms of kids and stuff like that. Um, you know, we have enough life experience. We've been through some battles. We've been through some stuff where, you know, we can help pour into them spiritually. Right. Um, you don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be, you know, like, as long as you have good spiritual practices and if you're a musician, good musical practices and you've, you've played in diverse areas, it doesn't need to be too complicated because maybe right. like, maybe we make it too complicated to say, well, a mentor needs to be all these things that nobody ever feels qualified and we don't have any mentors, you know? Right. So I don't think it needs to be too complicated, right. um, but availability and good self practices, people can mm -hmm. learn from that. For sure. mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, yeah, just overall character. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I think character is key. I think it, it, if it had not been for like the my character, there's a lot of doors that, that would not have been open mm -hmm. to me because, uh, you know, one of the main things is like, oh yeah, he's a great, no, he's, no, you got to get this guy. <laughs> you know, most, most, most of my, my business or most of my, you know, a lot of my income and, and, and stuff that have, have come in has not been because I pursued that opportunity. The opportunity yeah. came to me. Mm -hmm. all, all of my opportunities have come to me. And most of the times it's, that's just how it's been throughout most of the years, you know, people come to me, yeah, I want my, I want, I want to do a record. I want to do this. You know, I want to do that. Can you come in and do the praise team? You know, um, in, you know, it's, it's, that's just how it's been. It's just, it hasn't been me pursuing it because of my character, because of, of, of who I am as an individual people or leaders, leadership tends to trust what I do and they are the ones that get the word out there you, you want you want to do this call him call him call him and I get that's that's how that's how it kind of works you know it's I, I'd rather be word of mouth than pastor myself all over social media I'm a, a word of mouth guy you will more you will more be um, getting more work by someone who calls someone who says you know what get him get him get him and it'll be easier that way than than me trying to prove who i am mm -hmm. word of mouth always works so always work this is a question from the audience should churches be hiring a mentor mindset versus a skilled mindset i think you have to have both yeah you definitely have to have both when you're deal when you're dealing with the music ministry you have to know what you're doing musically Mm -hmm. You have to know what you're doing musically. Um, um, and, and you being that a strong mentor is only going to um, make your, your assignment a lot more easier because you know how to handle uh, certain people. You can, you can look into people and say, okay, this may not be the leadership, the leader that needs to be here right now. That guy or that woman is the leader. Mm. So let's, let's mentor that person. And, and, and that has happened um, in one of my assignments. Um, there was a, just, just um, I'll give you a small synopsis. We went into, actually we're still working with, with the church and there was a leader who we 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 didn't know he was he was a deacon, and what happened is that he's always he was always been there. He would be the first guy to to come, the last the last guy to go, and he he at that point was a was a keyboardist at that point in time. 
So we started our overall mentorship and um, um, I would say three, I, I would say within the third, third month, we decided, you know what, we're going to allow you at the be everyone at the beginning of rehearsal to do uh, a small devotion, five minutes or so, you know, um, but we're not going to tell you who is going to be doing it. You're going to know the day of, like pretty much, you know, it's, if it's seven o'clock, you're going to know that the 655 that you're doing devotion. Mm -hmm. So um, we got in before seven o'clock and this guy, Deacon, was already talking to um, the team. And then he started talking about, we sat down we st and he started talking about tardiness, you know, the importance of being on time, the importance of being, and the way he broke it down. I was about 20 minutes early that the next, that Sunday. He, he broke it down to a, to a science. And then me and my wife looked at us and said, he's the leader. This is the guy. This is the guy. He is the one that has to lead this team. Mm -hmm. And once we got that into place, we told him, we started pouring into him. Um, and he just took the reins and everyone just gravitated to, who, to, to his leadership skills because he had it. It was inside him. He just needed... He just needed one confidence and a mentor to pull it out and he did it. Right. So it's, it, it's, it's very interesting that the leadership that you may have in place may not be the leader for that team at this point in time or for this season. So how about we kind of unpack this? Maybe there are some churches or church leaderships or even people who are in charge of ministries right now mm. that maybe they want to put a mentorship, I'll say mentorship program in place. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that they, how, how can they do that? What are, what are some ways that they can actually put a program in place if that's the route that they wanted to go? It depends on what type of mentorship they're looking at. If they're looking at, you know, and taking kids, like the first thing that you look at in any type of program build is your intake. What's your intake of, the, men, the people who will be mentored and what's your intake of, of mentors. And then from there, I think they would have to figure out like, is there gonna be a term? If, if there's no term, people never wanna sign up for something that there's no end date, you know? So if you're trying to systematize it, um, you know, maybe like eight months, 12 months, depending on what you're, what you're thinking. And um, yeah, just think about when you do have those people come in, so you have your mentors come in, what does training or resources look like for them? Like, what's the requirement? You know, we require you as a mentor to sit down with one of the mentees once a week, you know, share a devotion, share a coffee. We'll do some group gatherings and stuff like that. Pray with them. You know, prayer is, prayer is huge. Just even having a young person with one person who's just going to call them and pray with them every single, like, you know, week, that's powerful. Um, you know, and, um, perhaps you structure a program where there's opportunities for them to do something, whether it's, okay, we're going to circuit through an opportunity to lead worship or to, you know, take on leadership or something, you know? Um, but just kind of like set up what your like milestones would, if you're really developing like as a, as a program, um, then I think that would be the way to go. And then as you intake people who are um, interested, those mentees and stuff like that, um, we do a sort of intake at our church, um, but it started off, um, and this is actually how I got started into music. I was never gonna pursue music. I was in biochemistry and uh, God just opened some doors for me to, to stick it into music. And I had started running this free music program at my church. And it was just for the kids who came um, to learn how to sing, um, to learn how to play instruments. And from there, we got our drummer. Um, he stayed with us for a good year. Like, you know, we trained him on drums. We trained a pianist. We had a few kids on guitar. Our vocalists, who all then grew up and became members of the team that are still with us now. And, um, 
and from there, like the intake was just, hey, come if you're interested. We just want to pour into you. So now we run um, like free piano classes, free guitar classes, um, you know, just for the kids who are interested. In, and as you see them, then you can kind of talk with their parents and say, hey, can we form something here? Like we're willing to meet you. And, and that's just something that was the heart of our church. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my history. So my dad planted our church when I was five. And so I was drumming by the time I was eight, playing keys by the time I was 12, had to pretty much bounce around every instrument. And I'm pretty sure my dad had kids just because he didn't want to have to keep paying outside musicians to come into the church. <laughs> so <laughs> the joke we have is dad had three kids. I play keys now and I do, I can jump around. My sister plays bass sometimes and we all sing harmonies and, you know, we were like a church plant family. And uh, that really his heart of seeing us develop into music became us teaching other people to play music. And, and that's how it kind of worked on a musical side of it. So I can't remember where all of that kind of came from, but when it comes to developing a program and systematizing it, I think that there's value in that just to kind of start to see who, where the potential is because interest or that hunger, if they're hungry, oh my gosh, you can do so much with hunger. When you have someone who just really wants it, especially like certain kids where they're still trying to figure out the identity, if there's a skill there and, and you as a leader see that in them, oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah. And then um, and then just the time to invest and put into them. Um, a, a program will help, but it's just that connection that's gonna be really huge. And even for, um, I've had older students, priest team leaders and different things from different churches come and work with them and uh, really it's just um, building that connection and that consistency like every week we would meet we would review okay what da 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 and it, it, it helps uh, like even for older people as well to have some sort of structure of checking in and then implementing something new okay so you I'm gonna use a kind of a, a, a biblical terminology here um, and I and correct me if I'm wrong Dale okay correct me if I'm wrong and the Bible usually talks about the older teaching the younger, right? So um, I love I love what you're talking about, Candace. Now I'm now I'm wondering the next step. Is the next step now if you have older people that are are, are available to to mentor or or how do I say that? That do we do we foster the older teaching the younger? Yes. <laughs> So I actually, um, I work at a, we have a community center as well. And so we actually, I'll use a method that we use from there. So we have a, it's called men in training. And it's basically to just meet in the gap of, of kids who don't have a father in their home. And uh, so we have spiritual dads that will come out um, and we'll ask them to be mentors, but we need to equip those mentors also with like resources or strategy or um, just something. So I think it's value add to any church to have some sort of resources to pull from. Um, I think if you're asking like older priest team members to mentor the younger ones, um, if they have skill, if they're like an older group of people who are skillful, then that could work. Maybe if you team them up on the same days to kind of sing together, um, maybe sing the same part or do some of those things. Um, in our church, I find that our older our singers, they're not skilled. They're not trained. They're not, but they are spiritual and they are, they have such a heart for God. And so I think mentorship is still value there. That's what I was saying. Like it's two pieces. You have to do the music side and you have to do, um, the spiritual side. So I think a spiritual mentorship is very valuable there. And then what I do for our churches, we'll do like, um, uh, once a month, I might do like a, a clinic on harmonies or I'll do something on rhythm or some, you know what I mean? Just to kind of put it out there for everyone to still feel like, hey, can I get to my next level skillfully? I can't afford lessons, but you know, if there's something, let me see if I can come and I get to see who's hungry that way of who's like, if, if there's no cost, it's like an hour and a half, like every now and again, you can now kind of gauge the older learners of who's trying to just coast and they just want to be on stage and they're not really trying to put in any work or grow or get somewhere. And I really like that you said that, Stephen, because that's just it. Like if we're not growing and getting to the next level, then what are you really doing? So I think when we kind of eliminate those boundaries and say it's, it's available, then you can get a sense of where your team is and who really wants to, you know, push past all the excuses and, and, and do the work, right? Yeah, I think that that is um, amazing that you brought that up because 
uh, too often it, it's uh, the younger people um, will not um, maybe respect the older elder people in their church where like like Cheryl was saying the, the elders of the church are there um, to help to guide and direct and if you're doing exactly that if you're pairing uh, a senior or, or a mature Christian with a, a younger Christian there's mentorship that's a spiritual level, which is the element that you want, as well as the the, 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 the talent. And when you get those uh, growing together, that is the yeah. best case scenario. It is. Um, just to remind people who are watching at home, music mentorship and ministries, what we're talking about here on the GMI Hub. Uh, this has been so amazing. We've had Candace Safry, we have Stephen Lewis, and we're unpacking uh, a vital, important thing, when, especially when it comes to music ministry, because we're talking about spiritual and talent growth simultaneously or simultaneously, however you want to say that. It's just really imperative, I think, for uh, as, as if you're a, a worship leader, and you're working with a group of people, these are amazing tools that you could put in your tool belt to help you to move forward in the ministry of the church that you're in. That's awesome. <laughs> and again, share the experience. <laughs> um, one thing that, that um, Steve, when you and I spoke offline, one mm -hmm. thing that we, when we talked about mentorship, there were two things that were mentioned. One, myths. What are some myths associated with mentorship, at least from, I'll call it from a church organization's perspective? Well, uh, I think one myth is that people feel that when the pastor speaks, that that's their, their version of mentorship. And that's just a word that's coming from the Lord for the con to, to the congregation. It's not necessary. It, it, you can pinpoint some certain things, but that's not true mentorship. Well, why do churches, some churches may not foster mentorship? Why is that? I think it's because they don't know. Mm. I think it's just a lack of knowledge, not knowing how to mentor. It's very, I can tell you this, it's very hard to mentor a creative very hard to mentor a creative explain if you're, if you're not a creative or you don't understand how creative work creatives work then it's your you might as well stop because we're we're not as creatives we're not going to receive it because you're not you're not talking our language we have we we talk to what we talk certain different languages you know um i always tell um when, when, when musicians are, I, uh, this, is, this is something that I do. When, when, when musicians decide to marry someone who isn't a creative, or you know it's someone who, who doesn't understand the musician, I always tell the partner, you have to understand, you're not marrying a woman or a man. You're marrying a musician. We're, we are totally different beings. We, we think differently. We, we, we work differently. And if you don't understand that, you're going to have problems, right? I'm in the studio right now. If I started creating, I don't know when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. My wife understands that. I would wake yes. her up at two, two, one, <laughs> sometimes one, two AM. I got an idea, hon. I need you to mm -hmm. sing this mm -hmm. And, and record her at that point in time. And then she goes back to sleep. She, like she understands that we are different, right? We are, we are very oh, wow. different. So mentors, no, I totally get it. I totally yeah, get it. So, right? We are very, yeah, we're very mean, different. We, you're not marrying a man or a woman. You're, you're yeah. marrying a musician and we don't think like men and women. Yeah. We're totally different, yeah. right? So I don't think there's mentors like-minded to understand the creative the, the creativeness of musicians singers um even media i mean all 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 the, that creative stuff they don't they don't know how to they don't know how to really disciple that so you have to find people who understand or talk the language because you'll always have an issue or you'll always have a problem and you, you'll always be concerned as you know what, if, if they get, if they get frustrated, are they going to leave my church? 
Mm-hmm. Right. If if I don't if I don't do anything, well, well, well maybe I, I shouldn't do anything. Just just do like be 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 an encourager, and that's great to encourage, but that's not growth. Mm-hmm. You're not growing that person. You're just encouraging them to do what they're doing. That's rich, man. That is rich. <laughs> you're just you're, you're just you're just it's encouraging true. them to continue to do what they're doing, but you're not growing them. Mm-hmm. You can't be afraid to allow your creatives to grow. Invest in the in these creatives. They will be loyal. They one thing about creatives, we never forget who helped. You can go as far as you. I I, I know certain people who are playing for like the top artists in the world right now but when they come home guess where they're going they're going to that same church that and 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 they're not even asking for they just want to go and play in a familiar surrounding that 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 encouraged them play with the same cats that they've been playing they grew up with that's all they that's that's all they want to do go back to to what they know Right, because that's what they know. That's what they grew up in. Creatives are not going to leave the church. That's not. That's not. That's not our purpose. Our purpose is to grow the church, mm-hmm. but it's our purpose also to be loyal to those who helped us. Mm-hmm. We will always be loyal. I can call certain people up like right now, and it's not even a hesitation. They'll just say yes. Why? Because they know what I what I did in terms of helping them grow to get to where they are. Mm-hmm. That's but leadership thinks that it that that's not the case. They they just think that you know what? If I do, oh, somebody might catch them and they may go to another church and I'll I'll be losing out. And that's not the case. Maybe is the challenge uh you think for people um needing to be mentored seeing the opportunity or the possibility or the potential and uh so the mentor themselves maybe has to communicate that to them. And mm-hmm. encourage them to say, "This is where I could see you." Uh, one day. Would that be a method that would be utilized to help someone to realize, "Oh, I could be mentored, or I need a mentor." As you see something in somebody, and you say, "Oh, you know what? One day, I mm-hmm. could see you doing this with the right type of guidance." Yeah, I I always um, open up with, in a sense, open up with that because a lot of a lot of these musicians right now. They're so they're so good, but they're 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 hearing it from their peers. Mm. You know, you'll see you'll see their peers post like a video of them and this and that. But it's such a small it's it's such a small window that you're not really seeing the overall potential. Okay, this one said it was good. That one said it was that one. Said, okay, you're you're you have to look beyond what your peers say and look at what potential you have and sometimes they don't see that because the praise they're getting the praise they are getting the praise but that's all they're getting but they're not getting they're they're not getting it's like i said that i see in you this and that and that and this and you have to see it within yourself they don't they don't hear that from their peers their peers are just encouraging them sounding great love what you did here love what you did there that that to me is not mentorship that that to me is just saying you're a good player mm-hmm. i don't come in and say you're a good player i already know you're a good player i already know that you're a great singer that's that's affirmation that's, that's not yeah, mentorship. it's affirmation yeah, exactly. you you already you already hear that you already hear that in, in social media what do you want like okay what Outside of that, what do you want to do? What What is it that God is telling you to do? Because this is what I see in, in your life. You know, this is what, this is what I discern. This is what I see, you know. Um, are, are you seeing it? No, you're not, you're not necessarily seeing that because you don't see the potential within you to do that yet. And that's what, because at the end of the day, I never saw myself being on, on, on this show talking about what I'm talking about right now. I never saw it ever. But for those of who, who, who know me, I'm, I'm, I'm the classic introvert. I'm an introvert to the core. Right. And prior to me even talking, as you can see, this, this was my, this is right here. This is how I talked. 
That's how you we know what, it. Steven? That's your security blanket. That's yes. Yeah. This, this is my security yeah. blanket. As, yeah, long man, as, I, as long as I have this, as long as I have this in front of me, I'm good. Yeah. Right. But there was one time when God said, no, I don't want you to be behind here. And I don't want you to even, you know, I don't want you to play anything. Well, I want you to, to pour into these people's lives. I want you to talk. I want you to say something. I want, because you have, you have a lot to say, but you're not saying it. So yeah. my whole mentality of, of, of my, my whole way of thinking had to change because, because if I didn't, God was still going to open those doors where I had to change. I had to. Well, Stephen, how to. many people <laughs> has God used by taking them out of their comfort zone? Hello. I mean, the <laughs> Bible is full of stories full of, of people that have been taken out of their comfort zone. Exactly. And by God. Yeah. Exactly. All the time. And he, he, I'm, I'm, I'm loyal to a fault and God knows that there's a certain things, there's certain areas where he had to like, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable. When I, when he always pulls me when I start getting comfortable, he always pulls me out when I'm okay. Okay. I could handle this now. I know these people. They know me. Um, I got a good chemistry. This is good. Okay, now I'm good. And then all of a sudden, he, he yanks that whole, like he, he yanks everything from me. Man, so true. Man, I could talk to you all day, man. <laughs> I was I was just waiting for you to start playing. That's what I was waiting for. Was like, he's just going to move into the next song. Oh, yeah, oh, no. <laughs> that was the segue. Uh, oh, but that but that's how that's how it's been in in my entire you know in my in my entire life that you know mm. there's certain things that he just had to pull me out of because I'm very loyal and I would I I you 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 would see the sink the the ship sinking and I'd be at the top deck going down with the ship and I'll be under there. And that's just how loyal a person I am. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but then when he started open, opening more doors, I started to get it. Okay. Okay. God, I understand some of the assignments that I do may not be a long-term assignment. Some of the assignments that I do may be a year or two year get in, Try to fix it, instill it, and then there's another assignment on 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 the way. And that's how that's how it's been. But this overall um, concept of mentoring and and pouring into um, the young, the younger, even the older, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of old there there are a lot of um, older singers. There are a lot of older musicians who never had that mentorship, and when you talk to them they would go back to like 15 years ago when when somebody told them something mm. and that stopped them from 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 yeah. doing what they're supposed to do they got they 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 were muted at that point in time mm -hmm. because somebody said something negative 15 years have gone by i come in and and most of the times most most of the the one on ones is like how are you but like, what's, what's going on, you know? And I always, rule of thumb, I always carry a tissue box because they're, they're, they're at the verge of just telling you exactly what happened. But that's, the, that's what pinpoints. Some of the old, peop some of the old people are, are the way they are because of what happened in their past. Mm -hmm. So I'm mentoring them through that to say, you know what? Although it happened 15 years ago doesn't mean your journey end, ended then. Mm -hmm. Let's pick it up and, and go to where God wants you to go. So every, there's, there's so many levels of different mentorship that you're looking at. Um, the younger people, they don't know much. It's easy. It's, it, you take a, a process to mentor that. But the older people yeah. who know a lot hurt, got hurt 15, 20 years ago. And now you've got to work through that hurt in order in order for them to be free into what they need to do mm -hmm. and that's a that we don't know how long that's going to take but once again mm -hmm. as candace said it's 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 investing <laughs> yes. 
it's it's invested and and you know what sometimes the investment is really good when when you see where they were and you see where they are now it's like you know what that's a, that's a really good investment very good in that investment that's ministry like, like yeah. the first thing that dale said was it's so similar to discipleship if we wanted yeah. to think about what discipleship looks like for musicians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is our our world of once you once you're in this industry or once you're in this um arena of music yeah we're called to disciple and exactly. it looks like this well our time has come to an end um, we have had a fabulous, I don't want to say goodbye. It's been so cool. Hey, eh, Cheryl? <laughs> it has been. <laughs> um, I really want to thank Candice and Stephen for, for just opening up and sharing your thoughts about mentorship. Um, I'm trusting churches and organizations and ministries are, are encouraged by this. Um, if there are any more questions, I, I don't know if there's any more out in there. I think people are just soaking it all in <laughs> at this point in time. Um, I, I'll just ask this, um, Candace and Stephen, are there any, I don't want to say last words, but any words of encouragement that you'd want to give potential mentors, potential mentorees or churches or any ministries that maybe they are either considering uh, considering mentorship um, or you're considering ways of how they want to continue their their ministry in one way would be through mentorship there was one thought that hit me with a question that came from the audience about should a church be looking at more mentorship training or music training and um, it just got me thinking that and it's very simple but um, if you're involved in the leadership of your church in any capacity, whether it's music or just the discipleship, um, sit down again with your vision statement. Sit down again with what is the ideal state of our church? What Each church is going to have a different focus. Like if my church is focused on, um, and, uh, and our church is focused on building more mentorship and community, um, so we do do missions, but we don't focus on missions. It's not one of the big pillars that, you know, we're really like one church cannot do it all. So right. sit down with your mission statement, your vision statement, and just say, how can we really focus like a laser? Like we don't just want to broadly shine the light. We want to laser in on these things. You know, is our music ministry something that we just want it to sound good on a Sunday morning? Or do we want to build like a legacy of intentional discipleship and training and a process? It's going to take a little longer. It's going to take maybe a few more resources and a structure or something. But is this our music ministry or do we just need it to sound good on Sunday morning? And ask the hard questions because I think if you can sit down with a vision statement and ask some questions, you'll, you'll be able to reverse engineer what your process is going to look like. Yeah. That's good. That's Love good. it. Stephen, any words of encouragement? Leaders, pastors, don't be afraid to invest in those who you know have potential, your creatives. Don't be afraid to invest in them. They are not going to run away from your church. They're not going to leave you hanging. They're not going to leave you high and dry. They will be loyal. Creators are very loyal people. They're very loyal people. Um, trust in, in the process. You have to trust in the process. You have to be able to, once, once again, Candace said, you know, see the vision. What is, what is the vision for the church? If, if it's music, then find a way that you, you can invest in, into uh, your music ministry that's effective. You have to find out what, what's effective, what works for your church, mm -hmm. right? Um, you doing Bethel songs may not work for your church. <laughs> Just because you like singing Bethel songs doesn't mean it works for your church. Mm -hmm. You have to find what works best for your church and you have to pursue, you have to pursue that. If you have any any questions or any doubt or, or what it is, hit me up, Stephen H. Lewis, I'm on Facebook or Legacy <laughs> Music House on Facebook. You know, we could, we, could, um, we could dialogue even further just to see exactly what you need. My, my main goal really is to go into churches and, and, and just have a great experience um, with worship, with the word, 
um, my, my that's my that that that's my main goal as as one of one as the leader and the president of Legacy Music House is is to make sure that the majority of the local churches are functioning properly, you know, down to the sound, that down to you know the visual. We have to be able to have the same representation representation that they have out in the world in the church, because the world has it. Those who, those who aren't, the, the non-saved know what quality is. They hear it, they see it every day. If they're coming into the church, they have to see the same thing in order to be interested. That's, you know, and that's what you have to look at. You have to look at what the future, what your vision, what the future of the church is, especially with this COVID-19 pandemic, three months of being shut in, I really do pray that the Lord is speaking to you about what you can do after this is over. Because mm -hmm. it cannot be the same old thing. It, it's just not going to work that way. You have to look at what the future, what God, I think, I think the Lord just brought this in so that the church can just like refocus. Amen and refocus and see exactly what, okay, what are we doing wrong? What do we need to do to make sure that when we come out of this, we're stronger than we were before? Is it, is it a stronger prayer team? Is it a stronger yeah. usher team? Is it a stronger, you know, uh, music team? Mm -hmm. Three, three months. And you know what? It's, it, we're, we still have enough time. Yes, it's 30%, but you still have enough time to make sure you know exactly what you need to do for your ministry and to make it work. Music mentorship and ministry has been our topic tonight. Candace Safri, thank you so much. Thank you. Stephen Lewis, God bless you and thank you. Thank you. Uh, wow, this has been great. And thank you, audience, for tuning in with us. This has been such a great topic, a great discussion. Please remember that uh, this particular episode has been recorded, and we are going to repost it again on our YouTube channel, GMI Hub TV. So look forward to seeing that. Um, as well, um, you may remember from our previous, uh, last week, one of our panelists, Tom Jackson, his organization is, prov is providing extra materials, uh, any, any downloadable materials available. They're already discounted on their website, but if you email us, if you sign up to, on gospelmusicindustryhub.com um, and send us your email address, we can send you an extra code and you'll get an extra 25% off of those materials. Those are eBooks, they are uh, DVD, CDs, and downloadable webinars that will help you as a performing or an onstage or face that faces the faces audience person uh, to, to, to improve your stage presence and create special moments for the people that you are, are sharing your talent with. Um, as well, um, we are here every week. We are here every Monday next week. Uh, we will be looking at copywriting and licensing of music. And we have a representative from SOCAN, Kazia Myers, who's going to be with us, and a few other uh, panelists that are going to be with us. So we look forward to you tuning with us next week. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>